Good day everyone! Welcome sa panibago nating tutorial series. So this is Information Assurance Security 2. This is part 1 and for today we are going to talk about network fundamentals. So mag-focus tayo sa network security. Why network security? Basically, network security is a set of rules and configurations designed to protect the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of computer networks and data or information using both software and hardware technologies. Basically, the overall objectives of this course is to learn the key concepts of computer networks, OSI, and TCIP models, understand the different types of networks such as we will be discussing local area network, metropolitan area network, wide area network, and we will be discussing networking components, networking protocols, and at last, we will be discussing IP addressing concepts. Aminin na natin na lahat na tayo ngayon ay gumagamit ng internet regularly. The computer network has revolutionized communications to the extent that it is now our preferred for everyday communication. Before digging in the network security and learn network protocols and services, you must have a knowledge of computer networks. So here is the question, what is computer network? A computer network is basically a group of computers or you can call them hosts that are linked to each other that enables the computers to communicate with each other and share their data, resources, and applications, as well as a networking hardware such as routers or switches. So basically, computer networks support number of applications and services such as access to the World Wide Web, digital video, or just printers also use of emails and instant messaging applications. So, networking of computers helps the network users to share data files. So, let's discuss the history of computer networks to understand the computer networking development. So, in 1950s, early networks of computers included the U.S. military radar system known as Semi-Automatic Ground Environment or SAGE. And also in 1960s, the Commercial Airline Reservation System or also known as Sabre, went online with two connected mainframes. Then in 1963, the concept of intergalactic computer network, basically a computer network that is intended to allow general communications among computer users was discussed. Also look at in 1964, researchers at Dartmouth developed the Dartmouth time sharing system at the same time, a research group supported by General Electric and Bell Lab used the computer to route and manage telephone connections. And in 1965, Western Electric introduced the first widely used telephone switch that implemented true computer control. And in 1972, commercial services using X.25 were deployed. So in the year 1991, the first home broadband was created. And in the year 1996, the 56,000 modem was invented by Dr. Brent Townshend. And in the year 2000, Cisco achieved a stock market capitalization of more than 550 million. And in the year 2001, home broadband enters the mainstream usage and begins growing at a faster rate than internet dial-up services. And in the year 2010, 100 gigabit Ethernet standard was fully completed. And in the year 2020, 100 terabit Ethernet by 2020. So this is how you can see the computer network is changing the world of communication. Now, the next important part that we are going to discuss is networking topologies. Network topologies is also important to understand how you are connected in your network or in the internet or you are using multiple number of devices in your network or how these devices connected or which network topology to connect into the particular network so we have bus star ring dual ring tree mesh and hybrid let's discuss first the bus topology 
So basically, bus topology is a networking topology that connects networking components along a single cable or that uses a series of cable segments that are connected linearly. Bus topology used in small networks because all devices are connected to a single cable. So you don't need to manage a complex topology setup and it is cost effective because you know that they can be run with a single cable. You don't need to purchase number of devices or you don't need to purchase number of cables. But the traffic of this topology is that if the cable fails, then the entire network will down. Also, if you have a lots of network traffic, then the performance of your network will decrease significantly. Okay? So next one is the Star Topology. Star Topology is the most popular way to connect computers in a work group or departmental LAN, but it is slightly more expensive than using bus topology. One advantage of Star Topology is that the failure of a single computer or cable doesn't bring down the entire LAN. So, a ring topology is a network configuration where the connected devices create a circular path for the data to travel. And each item gets connected into two and others, creating points on a circle that allows for communication to happen. Data packets travel from device to the next until they reach their intended destination. Typically, the secondary ring in a dual ring topology is redundant. It is used as backup in case the primary ring fails. In these configurations, data moves in the opposite directions around the rings. Next, we have tree topology. Tree topology is a hierarchy or inherited type of topology consisting of various hubs. So it is meant to be a hierarchy of hubs where all nodes are connected one to another or these hubs are connected to all the nodes. In this computer network, tree topology is called as a combination of a bus and star network topology. So next, we have mesh topology. A mesh topology is a network setup where each computer and network device is interconnected with one another. This topology setup allows for most transmissions to be distributed even if one of the connections goes down. And it is a topology commonly used for wireless network. So the last topology we have is hybrid topology. Hybrid topology is a combination of two or more topology is known as hybrid topology. For example, a combination of star and mesh topology is known as hybrid topology. The advantages of hybrid topology is we can choose the topology based on the requirement. For example, scalability is our concern. Then we can use star topology instead of bus topology. And the second one, scalable as we can further connect other computer networks with the existing networks with different topologies. And for the disadvantages of this topology, the fault detection and installation is difficult. And the design is complex, so the maintenance is high, thus expensive. So the next topic we are going to discuss is the OSI and TCIP network models. Basically, these models are the two most widely used networking models for communication. There are some similarities and dissimilarities between them that we are going to discuss. So as you can see here, one of the major differences between OSI and TCIP is that OSI is a conceptual model which is not practically used for communication. The rest, TCIP, is used for establishing connection and communication through the network. OSI stands for Open System Interconnection that is created by ISO and International Standard Organization. It was designed to be a reference model describing the functions of a communication system and basically provides a framework for creating and implementing networking standards and devices and also describes how network applications of different computers can communicate through the network media. And as you can see here, OSI has seven different layers. So we have here physical layer, data link layer, network layer, 
transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and the last is application layer. Now, let's get into their functionalities of each layer and the protocols that are used on that particular layer. So, let's talk about the first layer which is the physical layer. Basically, it transmits the individual bits over the transmission channel. So, physical layer is the responsible for transmission and reception. Physical layer is where it is dictated how bits are represented. The physical layer basically deals with the description of characteristic of the interface between the devices and the transmission medial. Representation of the bits, synchronization of bits, data rate, physical topology, line configuration, and transmission mode. And the protocols that are used in the physical layer are Ethernet, Bluetooth, and wireless. Next, we have the data link layer. Data link layer is responsible for transforming. It basically makes a physical layer free by masking them so that the network layer will not notice them. In this layer, the input data is split into frames that are carried out to the data link layer. Access control, error, and flow control. Then we have network layer. Logical addressing and routing are the major operations performed by the network layer. It basically translates the logical address into physical MAC address. And that's why we use protocols like address resolution protocol and reverse address resolution protocol. Next, we have the transport layer. The basic function of transport layer is to accept data from the layer above. Split it up into smaller units pass these data units to the network layer and ensure that all the pieces arrive correctly at the other end. The transport layer is responsible for the delivery of an entire message from an application program on the source device to a similar application program on the destination device. Transport layer also provides transparent transfer of data between end users, providing reliable data transfer services to the upper layers. Next, we have the session layer. This layer allows users on different machines to establish active communication sessions between them. It is responsible for establishing, maintaining, synchronizing, terminating sessions between end user applications. Then, we have the presentation layer. This layer is responsible for the delivery and formatting of information to the application layer for further processing and display. It relieves the application layer of concern regarding syntactical differences in data representation within the end-user system. Presentation layer is also known as translation layer as this layer serves as data translator for the network. The data which this layer receives from the application layer is extracted and manipulated here as per the required format to transmit over the network. Presentation layer ensures that the message is presented to the upper layer in a standardized format. It deals with the syntax and the semantics of the messages. And for the last layer we have here is application layer. Application layer is not the normal application we think. This layer interacts with software applications that implement and communicating components. Such application programs fall outside the scope of the OSI model. Application layer is used by end-user software such as web browsers and email clients. It provides protocols that allow software to send and receive information and present meaningful data to users. So our next topic is about TCIP model. So as you can see here, we have four layers. This model was created in the year 1970s by two DARPA scientists, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn. DARPA stands for Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. These two persons most often called the fathers of the internet. And then the IP or the Internet Protocol Suite is the conceptual model and set of communications protocols used in the internet and similar computer networks. 
and it is also commonly known as TCIP because of the foundational protocols in the suite are the Transmission Control Protocol or TCP and the Internet Protocol IP. As you can see in this model, we have four layers. Application layer, transport layer, internet layer, network access layer, and also we have the link layer. The link layer is the lowest layer of the TCIP model. It is also referred to some text as the network interface layer. Data link layer combines the physical and data link layer functions into a single layer. The network access layer of the TCP IP model combines layer 1, physical, and 2, data link of the OSI model. It describes layer 1 issues such as energy and bits. Then we have internet layer. It is the second layer of the TCIP model and this layer is parallel to the network layer of the OSI model. In terms of the structure sending the data packets to their destination network is the main function of the internet layer. The logical transmission of the data takes place at this level and also it is the second layer of the TCIP model. And this layer is parallel to the network layer of the OSI model. Next, we have the transport layer. Transport layer is required for transporting data beyond the boundaries of an address space. From the point of view of the transport layer, the data being transported consists of unstructured byte sequences. The transport layer is implemented by a concrete transport mechanism. The main role of the transport layer is to provide the communication services directly to the application processes running on different hosts. Application layer is the topmost layer in OSI and TCIP layered model. This layer exists in both layered models because of its significance of interacting with users and user applications. This layer is for applications which are involved in communication system. A user may or may not directly interact with the application. Next, you can see here the difference between the OSI model and the TCIP model. So in this figure, we can see that we can combine two bottom layer, physical layer and the data link layer that named as network access layer in TCIP model. And also in OSI model, we have network layer and named as internet layer in TCIP model. Then we have the transport layer in both model. And the three upper layer in OSI model, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer are combined in TCIP model and named as application layer. And of course, you can see here their protocols. The protocols used in application layer are HTTP, SMTP, Telnet, FTP, DNS, RIP, SNMP. And the protocols used in transport layer are TCP and UDP. And the protocol used in internet layer, we have here ARP, IP, IGMP, ICMP. And for the last layer in TCIP model, network access layer, the use protocols, Ethernet, Token Ring, ATM, and the last one is Frame Relay. Ayan. So that's it for this video and hoping na may natutunan kayo about Introduction of Information Assurance Security 2. At kung may mga katanungan kayo, contact nyo lang ako through email or chat. Okay? So see you on the next video.